Hello and welcome to this allegorical understanding of Revelation chapter 8. Now, there are videos for Revelations chapters 1 to 7 available on my channel and a lot of the important words and symbols repeated in this chapter of Revelations has already been explained in those videos and I won't be covering old ground unless it's completely necessary. Uh, there are also some instances where my book, The God Design, Secrets of the Mind, Body and Soul can provide further understanding. And I do have a yoga app available for iOS and Android in the app stores. Um, the app is based on the teachings of the Essenes. So Christ exists on multiple layers, the spiritual, macrocosmic, cosmic Christ, gospel in the stars, the physical, historical figure, and of course the microcosmic fluid or substance within our human organism. It would take a really long time to address these scriptures on all of those levels. Therefore, I aim to use whatever example provides the clearest interpretation, thus helping us to understand these ancient texts with clarity and vision. Again, my book, uh, which is now available as an audio book as well, does address these layers in a lot more depth than these videos allow time for. Um, as usual, I would like to highlight the fact that I do not profess to have all the answers. I have merely endeavoured to give the fairest and most substantiated analysis possible. I will be using the King James Version um, of the Bible as a point of reference because it is proclaimed to be the most authentic version that is widely available, although I do believe it necessary to say that the King James Version of the Bible is not original Bible text and that many of the Bible stories themselves are not original either, but rather they are evolutions of predated tales. For example, the Sumerian Great Flood. For a more detailed introduction and fair inquisition to the King James Bible, please watch the first 10 minutes of my Revelation chapter 1 video. Now as to why the scriptures are written symbolically, the Bible answers that question too. In the book of Matthew, he asks Jesus, why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus said, therefore I speak to them in parables because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled which says, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Okay, now on that incredible note, let's get started. 
So Revelation chapter 8 verses 1 to 2. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Okay, in verse 1 we are told that the seventh and final seal is now being opened. The seventh seal is the crown chakra. Its corresponding nerve centre is the choroid plexus. Now, the choroid plexus is responsible for the production and purification of vital fluids such as blood and CSF cerebrospinal fluid. Upon entering the seventh seal, everything is said to go quiet in heaven or silent. Well, first off, we know that heaven is the state of consciousness in which the soul and the body are in harmony with the divine mind. But why is there silence? Well, in previous chapters, the thankful and joyful sounds being heard up to this point in the scripture have been explained in great detail. Uh, these sounds are the tones, vibrations and the feelings that arise within us during periods of enlightenment due to the shift in our personal vibratory frequency. But now these sensations and sounds stop and silence occurs for what is described as about the space of half an hour. Now, this silence is the cessation or ceasing of physical perceptions, worries, interpretations and sensations as the psychic senses awaken. Silence is the state where we can be in touch with the divine mind, the time when our souls can hear that still small voice. 1 Kings 1912. As all of the excitement, adrenaline and praise caused by new understanding and indeed revelations settles, peace falls and our consciousness shifts into a state of calm or indeed silence. This is like that aha moment, the epiphany when peace clarity and acceptance re resides through our mind and body just before we hear the metaphorical penny drop or hear the voice of God. But what does half an hour represent? Half an hour in Hebrew times was not the 30 minutes that we have today. Historically, the Jews used to calculate the hours in a day by dividing the total hours of sunlight on each given day into 12 equal parts. Therefore, the length of an hour varied from day to day. Consequently, half an hour is not a distinct period of time. These Hebrew hours were known as halakhic hours or sha'ar zamanit, which means they were proportional. They were not fixed amounts of time. Having said that, some studies of gematria show that biblically one hour symbolizes one week. If this is true, then half an hour would be equal to half a week or 3.5 days, the same amount of time that Jesus was in the tomb and the same amount of time that the moon takes to travel through each zodiacal sign, including the void, which of course relates to the time it takes to preserve and raise the sacred secretion, the Christ oil, the divine substance or in Greek, 
the chrism. Moving on to verse 2, we see seven angels being given seven trumpets. Now, according to the Essene Gospel of Revelation, which predates the King James Bible by hundreds of years, the seventh seal reveals the angel of the earthly mother, who brings forth a message of blazing light from the heavenly father. This is reflected within the brain where the mother gland or pituitary center works in harmony with the father gland or pineal center. In Essene teachings, there are seven angels symbolizing seven earthly forces and they have seven relative heavenly angels or counterparts. In chapter one of the original Essene version of the book of Revelations found within the Dead Sea Scrolls at Qumran, it categorically and unequivocally states the following. The seven stars are the angels of the heavenly father and the seven candles are the angels of the earthly mother. Therefore, we can see that there are 14 angels altogether, categorized into two sets of seven. The first set corresponding to the heavenly father and the second set corresponding to the heavenly mother. Now, looking at the Essene tree of life will really help us to understand what they each are and their monumentous significance to our lives and to the environment that we live in. Since the angel being addressed in this verse of Revelation is the earthly mother, we will start with her and her corresponding angels. So, first is the angel of the earthly mother who blesses us by giving birth to our physical body and has rule over all living things. Then we have the angel of the sun, also known as Archangel Michael or solar energy. Michael blesses us with visible light and light energy to animate our bodies. Then we have the angel of water, also known as Archangel Gabriel or lunar energy who blesses us with the power of purification, both on land and within our bodies. Then we have the angel of earth, who blesses us with the gift of sustenance, nutritious soil and all of these sorts of things that we need for harvest. Then we have the angel of air, Archangel Raphael, who blesses us by transporting all the energies of the atmosphere. And then we have the angel of life, or sometimes known as the angel of health, who blesses every living organism from plant to creature with the power or spirit of life and the potential for health and harmony within the organism. Then we have the angel of joy, who blesses us with the ability to experience and enjoy life. And now let's take a brief look at the seven angels of the Heavenly Father. Bearing in mind that although these two sets of seven are separated in the Essene teachings, they are very much entwined. So we have the angel of the Heavenly Father, of course, our creator, blesses us with creation in all and through all. Then we have the angel of power, a reflection of the angel of the sun, who blesses us with the potential to activate the law or limitless power to create within ourselves. Then we have the angel of love. This is a reflection of the angel of water. They 
bless us with the glue, the foundation, the vibration which has the potential to produce total harmony. And then we have the angel of life, a reflection of the angel of earth, who blesses us with the cyclical nature of birth, decay and regeneration. G-O-D, God. Generation, operation, decay. And then we have the angel of wisdom, a reflection of the angel of air, who blesses us with the capacity for good, constructive, balanced and useful thoughts, which are the essence, again, of harmony. And then we have the angel of work. Now this is a really interesting one and it's a reflection of the angel of life or health. Now those who consider work to be a burden, which is most of us, find it hard to understand the blessing of this force and its capacity to be the supreme realisation of the divine mind. Individually speaking, it is possible to know when we have found the right work, when through it we are manifesting power, love, wisdom, peace, and we feel joy within ourselves. Work done well proves the sincerity of our feeling and therefore it raises our vibratory frequency. Then we have the angel of peace. This is a reflection of the angel of joy. Um, it blesses us with the vibration of total calmness and clarity that comes from being in harmony with all the other forces or angels. So, in this verse, we see these seven or 14, depending on how you perceive it, forces and or angels being given seven trumpets. Now, we have covered trumpets in previous chapters, but to quickly recap, they symbol an activation, waves or vibrations of activity and life, luminosity and vivifying power. This can also be seen in 1 Corinthians 15, 52. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Therefore we might say that the seven forces are coming to life or being given their power, their potential or indeed the existence that makes them perceivable. Okay so the breakdown for verses one and two is when the crown chakra activated, there was peace and clarity for a short period of time as I realised my alignment with the divine mind. I saw seven vital forces being empowered. Okay, and uh, now Revelation 8 verses 3 and 4. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Okay, so who or what is this next angel positioned at the altar? Well, let's look at the other components in these verses and we should be able to find out. We know that the altar is the place in our mind where error thoughts must be burned or sacrificed, like a lamb being sacrificed at the altar. And that a censer is an instrument or vessel used for burning incense. The fact that this angel has a golden sensor shows that it has a receptacle of spiritual light, being that gold from the root verb or means living light. 
In my book, The God Design, Secrets of the Mind, Body and Soul, it studies how George W. Carey unpacked the word or to show that the O is male, representing the solar energy in the pineal, and the R is female, representing the lunar energy in the pituitary. Together, they are the or, which is the divine substance. Therefore, the receptacle sensor of gold or, or spiritual light is of course the pineal gland, the receiver and transmitter of golden solar energy. These verses explain how the most delicate and secret process is occurring within the temple body. The animal nature has been refined. The corruptible seed has become incorruptible. The incense rising symbolizes the radiant transmuted essence of the body. This is the frankincense and myrrh that become gold. This is the alchemical wedding. This is the raising of the sacred secretion, the creation of nuclear fusion, the macabre, the kundalini rising, the crystalline dew of the adepts. Now, the Hebrews had a tradition of offering incense to God in the mornings, which signified them lifting their thoughts, their actions and prayers up to God. Saints were the enlightened beings who knew the true wisdom of the body, mind and soul. Therefore, I would suggest that this other angel is the angel of wisdom. Now, wisdom is spiritual intuition. It's the true voice of God within. Wisdom burns error thoughts and creates the sweet incense of truth and light and love. So the breakdown for verses three and four is, the power of wisdom in the mind gave the pineal gland much refined substance, which enhanced spiritual intuition at the seat of consciousness. The vibration of the refined essence ascended to the creator of all in heaven. Okay, moving on to verses five and six. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake and the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. Okay, so we know that the angel in question here is the angel of wisdom. The sensor is the pineal gland and the fire is the Holy Spirit, purifying error thoughts, which consequently purifies the physical cerebrospinal fluid in the third ventricle, which in turn cleanses the entire body via the nervous system. Next is the spirit cast into the earth. Metaphysically speaking, the earth represents the physical human body. Therefore, this statement means that the wisdom of vision, supernatural sight, or intuitive foresight that have been achieved by enlightenment manifests in our body as the seven forces activate sound. We saw similar wording to what is written here in Revelation chapter four, verse five. Voices, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. So once again, the voices are the undeniable revelations of truth received in spirit. They can be audible, sometimes 
they're silent and intuitive and sometimes they're visual pictures or visions the thunderings are the vibrations and emotions brought on by super consciousness which cannot be ignored and the lightnings are the waves of light energy stemming from the solar plexus toward the sacred heart which ignite and develop the Christ power within. And the earthquake is the stunned, shocked, provoked understanding perceived in moments of total truth and realization. It can be quite overwhelming. In verse six, the seven forces prepare to sound their trumpets thus they prepare to reveal their power. So the breakdown for verses five and six is, and wisdom filled the mind with spirit, specifically in the pineal gland and then into the body. There were revelations of truth and emotions which could not be ignored. Waves of light and an overwhelming realization of veracity. The seven forces and their power prepared to illustrate their poten potential. Okay, so let's move on to verses seven and eight now. The first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of trees was burnt up and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea and the third part of the sea became blood. Sounds horrific, doesn't it? <laughs> but let's have a look. So using the Essene Gospel of Revelation, again, to cross-reference, we know that the first angel being discussed is the angel of water. This is also known as the angel Gabriel, the angel of lunar energy that indeed controls the tides or the waters of the earth. This is the angel or force that blesses us with the power of purification, both on land and within our bodies. This lunar force then casts hail and fire mingled with blood upon our bodies. So let's look at these three elements. Never fear. The hail is the condensation of lunar energy, also known as soma, which means body in Greek. Jesus said, take eat this is my body or soma in matthew 26 26 and in the rig veda 1700 to 1100 bce it says we have drunk soma and become immortal soma is found in every single neuron of the human body the fire is of course the solar force the spirit of the sun or the prana that governs the pineal gland and in turn the pingala nadi. Thus we can see that the lunar and solar energies are combined, that's the mingled with blood. Blood symbolizes the auric fluid or the life contained in God's word or seeds in the beginning was the word and thus the potential for pure unlimited power and unconditional love. Also, purified blood returns homeostasis and health to the body, for the life of flesh is in the blood, Leviticus 17, 11. Now the next line is a little trickier to grasp, but let's take a look. And the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. The third pertains to the third plane of consciousness. This is the psychic 
consciousness or the psychic plane. When the fourth plane, which is the physical plane of consciousness, is suppressed by the opening of the seals, that is when the third or the psychic plane ignites as the hail, lunar, fire, solar, and auric fluid, blood, burns up the trees or nerves and outward towards the skin or the aura, the covering, which is the grass. Grass symbolizes skin or the aura around the body because it's also a covering or layer over the earth. And of course, the earth is the body. Furthermore, there are three dominant nadis in the etheric body, the Ida, the Pingala and the Sushumna nadis. Now in Kundalini, the energy from the Ida in, and the Pingala nadis are encouraged into the third Sushumna central nadi. And this is how one achieves enlightenment in those teachings. So if one third of the trees or nerves is ignited by spirit, this verse could be referring to the achievement of activating the significant one of the three third Sashamna Sashamna Nadi. Okay, moving on to verse eight, it says, and the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire, sounds like a volcano, was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. Right, so the second angel, this is Archangel Raphael, the angel of air, activates like a great mountain burning with fire. Basically, the force of air rushes up through the body like fire through a volcano, flushing or casting impurities and error thoughts into the sea. The sea is of similar composition to blood, but is not living. So the psychic plane, or that third part of us, is purified, vivified and spiritualized as the sea becomes blood just like when Jesus turned water into wine, spiritualized substance. So the breakdown is the force of water flowed as did lunar energy and solar energy and auric fluid within the body. The psychic body ignites through the nerves out to the skin and aura. The force of air gushed upward through the psychic body and spiritualized the blood. Okay, let's move on to Revelations 8 verses 9 and 10. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. Well, okay, well verse nine shows the carnal desires of our physical or non-spiritualized body being destroyed. Every creature lurking within our psyche dies and every ship of desire or vessel of deception sailing on the sea of our psychic body is destroyed and it frees us from captivity. So what sounds like a terrible thing is actually the most amazing, amazing explanation. Now in verse 10, the third angel, also known as Uriel, or the force of the earth, and thus the body activates, and there fell a great star from heaven. Now as discussed, stars represent an awakening, the glory of a new realization or an enlightening drop of wisdom in the mind. And this is what falls, rapidly descends, 
into the superconscious mind or heaven, burning as it were a lamp or could say creating luminosity within the mind which then fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water, meaning that the thoughts of enlightenment create powerful biochemical secretions that drop into the CSF in the ventricles, vitalizing the entire body. So the breakdown. The error thoughts and desires lurking in our psyche are eradicated. The force of the body activates and enlightenment descends, illuminating the mind and consequently the entire body via the CSF. Okay, so Revelation 8 verses 11 to 13. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars so as the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the mist of heaven saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. <sighs> well, <laughs> in verse 10, a star or enlightenment descended. So verse 11 tells us that the name of this star is Wormwood. Okay, so what on earth does Wormwood mean or symbolize? Well, Wormwood is the name for a plant also known as Artemisia. This plant, which I don't know if I said that right, produces an oil that is used to kill intestinal worms. The plant residue was known to be very potent and very bitter. Thus, we can see that the oil of enlightenment, illuminating the mind and body, like wormwood, repels unwanted parasites and or other entities just like wormwood. Now verse 12 introduces the fourth angel. This is angel Michael, the angel of the sun or light. And the third part of the sun was smitten. Okay, so this means that the psychic essence in the solar plexus, the home of the emotional body, was harmonized, it was loved up, uh, smitten. And the third part of the moon, well, the moon rules the intellectual plane, thus the psychic essence of the intellectual mind also harmonizes. And the third part of the stars, the stars are the rays of enlightenment within the psychic, which, psyche, sorry, which also harmonizes. So, as the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise, this extremely convoluted sentence explains how the activity of the psychic body dilutes or darkens the activity of the objective or physical mind, day shone not bringing balance or equilibrium to all of the bodies, planes, the mental, astral, emotional, etc, etc, as a whole. And finally, verse 13 reveals another angel or force in the superconscious mind shouting caution to the inhabitants of the body, earth, 
other truths, voices of vibrations, trumpets of the remaining three angels have yet to be activated. Okay, so the final breakdown for verses 11 to 13. And the enlightenment repels and kills unwanted parasites and entities just like Artesmia. The force of the sun harmonizes the emotional and intellectual bodies by a rays of enlightenment in the psyche, creating an equilibrium across all of the planes of consciousness. Another force in the superconscious mind alerts me to the fact that there are three forces yet to activate. Okay, so let's run all the way through the breakdowns, verses 1 to 13 of Revelation 8. When the crown chakra activated, there was peace and clarity for a short time as I realised my alignment with the divine mind. I saw seven vital forces being empowered. The power of wisdom in the mind gave the pineal gland much refined substance, which enhanced spiritual intuition at the seat of consciousness. The vibration of the refined essence ascended to the creator of all in heaven. And wisdom filled the mind with spirit, specifically in the pineal gland and then into the body. There were revelations of truth and emotions which could not be ignored. Waves of light and an overwhelming realization of veracity. The seven forces and their power prepared to illustrate their potential. The force of water flowed as did lunar energy and solar energy and auric fluid or substance within the body. The psychic body ignites through the nerves out to the skin and aura. The force of air gushed upward through the psychic body, spiritualizing the blood. The error thoughts and desires lurking in our psyche are eradicated. The force of the body activates and enlightenment descends, illuminating the mind and consequently the entire body via the CSF and the enlightenment repels and kills unwanted parasites and entities just like Artesmia. The force of the sun harmonizes the emotional and intellectual bodies via rays of enlightenment in the psyche, creating an equilibrium across across the planes of consciousness. Another force in the superconscious mind alerts me to the fact that there are three forces yet to activate. Well, that's it for this chapter. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like, um, subscribe and comment. It does help these videos to rank and if they rank then it makes them easier for other people to find. Um, a special thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon, especially Christopher Hill and Cindy Jewell. Your generosity support and encouragement is appreciated massively. Thank you, all of you. Um, so here are the links to all of my social media communities, which are also listed in the description box below, along with links to my yoga app, which is based on the teachings of the Essenes or the Essene way. Um, 
Thank you all once again and God bless. Peace and light.